Welcome to my channel. For those who don't know me, my name's Charles and I've been a professional photographer for quite a long time. But because of health concerns, I've had to limit the amount of photography workshops that I do. So over the last two years, I've built up a YouTube photography page teaching people how to take better photos in landscapes and astrophotography and all that. Today, I want to share why I bought a DJI Mini 2 drone. When I go out and about, a lot of time I like people to see where I'm taking photos from. So this is why I bought my little DJI Mini 2 drone. And I've got just a couple of accessories that I'll talk about. But the heart of this video tutorial is to show you basically how I use the DJI Mini app to take my video and how I edit the videos that I take. Now I use some of the quick shot features in the DJI app but only to take the raw video. The rest of it I do at home because I find that although the QuickShot app, I can turn it into a little quick shot to display on Facebook, is great, it's very limited. Plus it has all the DJI logos and all that on there. So I don't wanna have all that on there as well as the music is the same. So I wanna be able to add my own music. Now, everything that I talk about in this video, I will put links in the description so that if you forget what I talked about, like where I found the music and all that, just look in the description. There'll be all the links to it in there. Plus, I've got chapter marks. So if you forget, if I talk about a certain thing, just look for the chapter mark in the description and you can just bounce along to those chapters. So let's get started. First off, just the accessories. I've got this little landing gear here. I know some people laugh at these, but I find that when you're starting out, especially with the little Mini 2, so the body is sitting on the floor like that. I found that it was very uncomfortable. It's great to be able to take off, but I find with my shaky hands and all that, it's a bit, bit of a problem for me. I find these are quite good. And I've flown over one and a half kilometers away from it, and these have never been an issue. They haven't restricted the drone at all. Now, if you're new to these, you have to remember that the way to connect them, it's quite easy. You just push two fingers down, they clip in, you heard the clip. But to remove them, you've got to use three fingers, your thumb on one side, two fingers on the other side, in the middle here, and you just press down, and you'll hear it disconnect like that. Don't try to force from the side, or else you'll find that it'll come apart on the drone itself here. The last piece of gear that I've recently just bought is range extender aerials. Now I know some people don't believe in these, but I have found that in a built up area that these are great to use. And all they do is they clip on the back here like so, and you just press them in. I found though, if I'm way out and there's no interference without these, and I didn't have a problem with connection. I found the only problem I have, the drones tells me that it's losing connection is if I'm very close to suburbia and there's a lot of interference around. So, and I found since using these in a built up area, I've never lost connection between the controller and my drone. Now, I will show you how I set up to take video. Please understand this video is directed towards people new to using the DJI Mini drone. It might be the way that you're flying or you're using the app, but this is the way that I use the app. That's it, it's powered up. And if you look, you can see I'm using the rules of thirds, diagonals, and the pinpoint. Quickly, I'll show you how I've set up how it turns around. So the yaw speed and the gimbal. So we go up to three little dots up the top, click on that, we click on control, we go advanced gimbal settings, click on that, and here you see we have the normal mode, the sports mode, and the sin mode. I really, rarely use sports mode because I'm trying to get very good video, so I find I either shoot in normal or in sin mode. The video that I shot, and I'll show you just in a couple of minutes, was all shot in sin mode. In normal mode, my pitch speed is 10 degrees per second. The pitch is your gimbal, your camera, is going up and down. And if we have the pitch smoothness set to 30, if you go up or down, it's not going to bounce down, it's not gonna bounce up, it's gonna take its nice time, and when you stop it, it's just gonna gradually slow down. Also, the yaw rotation is just set to 16 degrees. So everything goes very smoothly. Now if we go all the way down to sin mode, which is the one that I use quite a bit, pitch speed is 10 degrees per second, pitch smoothness, 30, your rotation 
10 degrees per second and your smoothness 30. So the smoothness, whether I'm using the camera or whether I'm turning around, is set to the maximum. You can use your own settings, but after watching a few YouTube videos of different people using these, I've come to these settings and I found they work best for me. They might work best for you, but this is just to give you an idea when you're setting out, when you're recording video, if everything is nice and smooth, you'll end up with very smooth video. If you look all the way down to the bottom right here, can corner here, it's telling me storage, resolution, frame rate, EV, and it's set to auto. Some people like shooting in pro mode. In pro mode, you can set your shutter speed and your ISO. I've tried it, but I found that for me, it's so much easier just to leave it in auto. But one thing I do is if click here, EV is your exposure. I set it to minus 0.3. What this means is that it's just slightly darkening your exposure. For example, let's say that you're shooting away from the sun. So the video is going to be exposed quite nicely, but all of a sudden you turn around into a brighter area. The camera just takes a couple of seconds to adjust and you might be overexposing that area. So I found at keeping it at 0.3 just gives me the correct exposure. The only other that you have to set is how you're recording it. Now I record at 4K. All my video is recorded 4K. The reason that you should shoot in 4K is that you can downsize if you're sharing on social media to 1080p. Also, if you want to crop your video, then you're still going to get very good video. And you have to make a choice whether you shoot in 24 frames per second, 25 frames per second, or 30 frames per second. I found 25 frames per second works great. It gives me a nice, clean video. I set everything that I use to 25 frames per second. So my Sony ZV-1, which I'm using to record this video, is set to 25 frames per second. My Samsung Galaxy S10, the video is set to record at 25 frames per second. So everything matches up when I want to use it in my timeline. Now I want to show you how I edit my videos because it's great shooting video, but you really want to be using a video editor to edit your video. And that way you can add your own music to the tracks and all that. Now the software that I use to edit my videos is from Cyberlink. It is called PowerDirector 365. It is a subscription base, just over $4.50 per month. So that like a cup of coffee a month, and you always get the latest software available. You can buy it outright, but there are some things in the outright version that are not available to the subscription base. And from time to time, they will update it. You will always have the latest software at your fingertips, which is quite handy. So as you can see by the title here, White Horse Mountain version five. So there's four previous versions of different ones. And I just kept trying to see which one was going to look best. But this is the most complicated one I've done. It just shows you that if you think about what you want to do, plan it out, you actually will get a really nice video of where you were. So you can see in the videos here, it says 360 from far away. Another one here says DJI Circle 3, DJI Circle 4. I use these in another video. DJI forward 500 meters, DJI reverse 500 meters and th this one here and this one here that's not marked this one is ticked these were when I had the camera vertical facing the ground the way I started this was from this one here DJI reverse 500 meters from here I reversed 500 meters I stopped and then from here you see here 360 from far away I did this one and I circled from this position in a 360 degree loop. Like that. When I'd finished this, I went forward back 500 meters. Like this. But notice here that as I'm getting close to the tower, I tilted the camera slightly down because I had an idea in my head. And then I just kept on going and as I passed it, I brought the camera back up to horizontal. And then at the end, I just spun it around to face the lookout again. 
And here is the tricky part here. This one here. This is vertical. From here, I went vertical and I just went over the lookout like that. And I kept going for just a little bit. So now you see everything that I used. And this is how I finished up. So we'll start the video here. This is all unedited. I will edit the colors later. I'm going around 360. And this is all shot in 4K. You can see, you see a very nice view from this area. Gives people a very good idea of where you are. Now here comes the first splice. Now I'm going forward. So I'm using the DJI forward 500 meters. Now as I get closer, pay attention that the camera starts tilting down. You can see that the camera's tilting down. Now second splice. And look, now it's just going straight over the top. Now the third splice, it just comes back up, goes just past the mountain and rocks around. But this was all shot in sin mode. There's a little eye here on all these videos that they were modified and I sped them up. So if I click on the first one here, go to tools and I click video speed. You can see that the first part, the speed was accelerated by 1.6. So I made it 1.6 times faster than what it shot. I prefer to shoot this. So we click OK. Now the next one here, I click on it. I click on tools, video speed. This is coming forward. And you can see now it's forwarded by 2.6. Now I chose 2.6 because I wanted to get the timing right. I want to make the video look the same. So it makes it look like everything was shot at the same speed. So doing the 360, coming forward and all that will look exactly the same. So this one was 2.6. Now, the overhead one here, I go back to tools, video speed, and you can see this one was 1.5. So I accelerated it by 1.5. Again, remember, I'm just trying to keep everything to look fluid. And the last one here, the DJI forward, we go back up here to video speed, and it's 2.4. Now remember, the first part of this one was not 2.4. But it just worked out that this matched the rest of the video. So I hope you've got an idea of how I do it, just so that you can see how I go about doing this. This is probably my best video because I had so much time on my hand. I'd made a plan of exactly what I wanted to do here. So I went up to take photos, but I really had a plan that this is what I wanted to do to really show off how good this area was. Now, the one thing I forgot to mention is when I put all these videos on my timeline here, once I had cut them to where I wanted to, I added a fade transition between each clip. And for this video, I found that a one minute fade transition was great. So I come up here to the transition room, clicked on it, and I used the fade effect and I dropped it between each track like this. Then I double clicked on it and you see here the duration and I just clicked one and clicked enter. And this gave me a one second transition between each clip. Then once I had put in the transition, I just selected my last video here like so. I clicked on fixed enhanced and I clicked on color adjustment. This is the settings that I used. You can see here, I click color adjustment. I left the exposure along the brights alone, but I added some contrast. I added some saturation. I added some vibrance. Highlight healing just meant that 
I was able to get more clarity from the sky so the sky didn't look so blown out and I also increased the shadows so that the foreground which was a little bit dark wasn't as dark and I left the sharpness alone. Once I had gotten this clip correct I clicked on apply all. This applied all the settings that you see here to all the videos in my timeline. From there I saved my video.